Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Orla McCormack. I'm a lecturer in the School of Education at the University of Limerick. And I've been asked to give a short talk today on an aspect of my research. And I'm going to look at that research in terms of its potential impact. So firstly, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, introduce myself a bit more, introduce my research interests, and then talk a little bit about the specific research um, that I'm looking at today. Then I'm going to look at the potential impact that that research can have. I'll turn off the video now, but I'll come back to you at the end. So I suppose before I look at my specific research, um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a qualified science teacher. I studied science teaching in UL and I graduated in 2003. I came back at the time, I came back to do a master's with the intention of going teaching two or three years later. But that ended up becoming a PhD and I ended up staying on within the, the School of Education in UL. So I graduated with the PhD in 2010 and since then I've been lecturing in the School of Ed. So I lecture um, pre-service teachers at undergraduate and master's level. And the main module that I teach on is curriculum studies. And within that, I look at curriculum change and reform, look at the idea of what does curriculum mean, look at the selection, who has a voice and a say within curriculum selection and development, and also looking at the personal nature of change. And the ultimate goal within the module, I suppose, is that we will be developing teachers who are aware of change processes, aware of the difficulties attached to bringing about change within um, curriculum and are aware of their own personal response um, to change. And it's a module that I, I love to teach and it has, as you'll see in a few minutes, it has informed my research. My research interests are quite broad and up until recently I suppose I have been trying to identify an overarching theme or, or focus to them. So some of my research for example has looked at reflective practice within initial teacher education, looking at ways of supporting pre-service teachers to reflect on their practice and to ultimately bring about change. I've been involved in a number of European projects that have looked and focused on teacher professional development. I've looked at um, projects that have looked at curriculum change within schools, for example. And also there is the study I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, which is looking at sector wide um, change. So looking across all the different range of studies that I've been involved in and projects, I think the overarching theme within them is that it is looking at change and it's looking at understanding and supporting change in terms of curriculum, school culture and also at institutional level. So I'm going to talk now about one specific aspect of my research. For about the past seven years, I've worked with publicly managed schools to support them in identifying the core values that underpin the sector. And this has been with a colleague of mine, Dr. Joanne O'Flaherty. So I'm going to introduce you to a bit of the context behind this research. What does it mean? What does publicly managed schools mean? I'm going to show you some of the, the findings that have emerged from this and then look at the impact this has had on the sector. So there are probably a couple of points of clarity or context that I need to make before I look at the, um, the specific study that I have been involved in. When I say publicly managed schools, I'm referring to the education and training board sector here. So these would maybe traditionally have been referred to as the VEC sector or vocational schools. So since 2013, they have been um, changed into education and training boards. There are 16 education and training boards throughout Ireland, which govern 262 post-primary and 11 community national, their primary schools. And this makes the ETB the largest publicly managed education sector in Ireland. 
I have put the title around the, like the core values underpinning publicly managed schools. But this comes from a specific concept within legislation, and that is of the characteristic spirit of the school. And the, this idea of characteristic spirit, it can often, I suppose, be understood maybe in terms of the school ethos and internationally, maybe the, like the, the culture of, of a school. But the 1998 Education Act uh, coined this term characteristic spirit. And it defines it as the cultural, education, moral, religious, social, linguistic and spiritual values and traditions which, in, which inform and are characteristic of the objective and conduct of the school. So the Education Act applied this concept to the, the sector. And up, up until then, it hadn't been applied to, to the sector. It hadn't been an area that they had considered. They didn't have a, an expressed characteristic spirit or set of values. So the Education Act then places a, a legal requirement on the sector to identify its characteristic spirit. Um, and the sector, up until we got involved in about 2014 on, they hadn't really considered this characteristic spirit at the sector wide level. Individual schools may have articulated their own individual um, values, but it wouldn't have been um, collectively. And that's where we came in then in that they, they asked us to, to work with them to try and identify what their characteristic spirit or what I refer to as core values, what that would look like and how the, the members of the sector view the characteristic spirit of it. For the first aspect of the, the study, we engaged with um, 18 ETB schools and this was a national sample of schools across six ETBs. And we would have visited schools for a minimum of a day and we, while there, conducted interviews with key um, school personnel, so principals, um, deputy principals, teachers. So in total, across the 18 schools, we conducted 43 in-depth interviews. We also conducted surveys with teachers, so that was 126 surveys. We did surveys with a cohort of second year students, so that was 697. And then we would have done a focus group in, um, with students in each school. So in total, there was 18 focus groups conducted. And as the title of the slide said, we were the, the focus was looking at exploring and expressing the characteristic spirit of ETB schools. So what we were ultimately interested in was adopting a ground kind of bottom up approach to trying to identify how people within the sector viewed the core values of it. So in various ways, we would have through the data collected, uh, I asked participants to identify what they think the core values of the sector are. We also would have been interested, I suppose, in terms of the, the difficulties that maybe the schools experienced in living out these core values on a day to day basis. So there, there would there could be a tension between what the espoused core values would be versus the, the lived values within the school. So we were interested in this as well. As well as that, then we did interviews with the education officers and CEOs within the six ETBs and within ETBI. So in total, that was eight interviews. And again, we would have been looking at how they perceived um, the core values of the sector, difficulties that they might um, experience or believe that the sector experiences. At the time of completing the study, we would have um, completed 18 case studies for each individual school, and this was sent to each school. We compiled a report for ETBI and the six ETBs that identified the, the core values that the participants 
um, identified themselves and also any potential issues or difficulties that um, are emerging or, or may emerge. And that was submitted to the, the sector. Since then, um, I, along with various colleagues, have continued to mine the data. And to date, we have seven papers published um, in international journals on publicly managed schools and in some way the, the characteristic spirit or the core values of, um, of these schools. I'm not going to talk through each individual paper because I think we'd be here for quite a long time, but I suppose they, some of them are kind of theoretical and looking at the concept of characteristic spirit. Some of them look at how teachers and staff perceive the concept of characteristic spirit and how they perceive the particular values of the sector. Some of them draw specifically on the student voice and student um, perspective in this regard. And some of them look at maybe issues or challenges that the sector faces in this regard. So, for example, one of them looks at the place of religion um, within the sector and problematizes that. Um, while another paper looks at the perception of ETB schools within the community from the perspective of teachers and um, staff. And I suppose on that, because I'll refer to it again later in the talk, um, a number of interviewees in the study would have felt that because the sector has never explicitly articulated a shared collective um, set of values, the, the, the sector and particular schools can continue to, um, to struggle um, with how it's perceived by the local um, community. So based on the work that we did across the 18 schools, we would have identified five core values that were emerging from the teachers and the students and the staff um, and presented that to ETBI. Since then, the sector have um, completed additional work themselves where they've worked with principals and deputy principals around identifying these, these core values. So based on our foundation ground up work and also additional work that they have done, the sector now has a clearly identified um, core values that staff buy into and agree with. And you can see them on the slide here. So they are excellence in education, care, equality, community and respect. So it might not seem like much, but this is the first time that the sector as a whole has said, this is explicitly said, this is what we stand for. This is what ETB schools try to instill in students. Um, this is what we care about. And if you come to one of our schools, this is what you will experience. So this is quite important um, and quite an important step for the, the sector. So based on the work that we did around identifying the five core values and the work that the sector has continued to do on this, the sector is now in a position where um, it can begin supporting schools to look at their policies and practices and see how they align with the five core values. So myself and my colleague Joanna Flaherty and Erin Beale re-engaged with the sector again in the past year um, to support them in this regard. So we completed an extensive literature review and policy background paper in terms of the, the these five core values. So this was, I think, about an 80,000 word report. And in it, we did a number of, of things. We positioned the five core values within the, a philosophical perspective. So what there some of the ways, for example, that respect can be understood philosophically? What are some of the ways that equality can be understood? We also conducted a systematic review on research papers in the last 10 years that explored at least one of these five core values. And we provided a synopsis of this literature 
um, research and identified reoccurring themes um, across it. We also reviewed all educational legislation within Ireland, all circulars, all policy documents and all curriculum related to primary and post-primary from the perspective of core values um, and then the five core values specifically mentioned by um, identified by by the sector. And this was the idea behind this work is that it positions um, the, the core values within a strong theoretical research and literature perspective. And also from within the report, we identified core principles of practice that are emerging from the research and the literature. So, for example, if equality and respect are to be lived out within ETB schools, how can that be done? What are the core um, aspects that the sector needs to um, take on board in order to achieve this? So of all the various pieces of work that I've done and the different bits of research, um, this, these studies, I think, have had the most um, obvious impact in that you can see it directly in terms of the, the work of the sector. What it has also done, I suppose, from um, my perspective, is that it has positioned myself and my colleague, Joanna Flaherty, as the leading and most published researchers in the area of the characteristic spirit and publicly managed schools in, in Ireland. As far as I'm aware, um, I, I haven't come across other researchers that have published as much as, as we have on this. But more importantly, I feel is that this work has impacted directly on the ETB um, sector. So it has, as I've spoken through already, it's helped them to identify and clarify their characteristic spirit and their core values. And most importantly, this was done in a ground up manner that has been collaborative and engaging with um, principals, deputy principals and teachers and, and students. And what we know about change um, at all levels is that there has to be buy in and people have to agree with it and believe in it. So that approach, I think, was was very important um, and was intentional. But also, I suppose these aren't just five random core values that have been selected through our work we have positioned these within strong philosophical research and le legislative positions. So the rationale for selecting these five core values is very strong. Um, our work as well, I suppose, has, has identified um, issues in relation to the position of religion within certain ETB schools, and they are non-designated schools. Um, I won't go into it in too much detail, but I suppose there's two different types of ETB schools. Designated schools tend to have a religious body involved in some way in the, the school life, whereas non-designated don't. So our work and our paper have highlighted concerns about the, the dominance of um, Catholic practices within these non-designated um, schools. So this has supported the sector in terms of exploring this and addressing this. Um, and our work has also through um, the identification of the core values and in terms of the literature policy and background paper, it's, has, it's supporting the sector in the rollout and the living out of these core values in ETB schools. And that's particularly because there was a strong focus in our work on principles of practice. What does it mean um, to implement these in, into school life? And that has a, had a direct impact on the practice of the sector. So our work has supported the sector to identify a new discourse to describe and define itself. I mentioned previously that Prior to our work, the sector didn't have a collective um, articulated understanding of what it stood for. And in place of that, and because of that, 
we found that oftentimes historical perceptions of the sector often originating from kind of um, the vocational sector back in the 1930s, they have maintained and existed. So because the sector now has this clearly articulated um, representation of its core values, what it stands for and what it means, this will hopefully alleviate um, negative perceptions where they continue to exist. We found out in the past couple of weeks that that the, the sector, as a result of our policy and background paper, have implemented direct changes to teachers and schools practices. So one of the main ideas to emerge from the, the systematic review of the research is the importance of developing professional learning communities amongst um, teachers to support teachers to embed these core values. And the sector are already supporting teachers, particularly within community national schools, to develop these types of communities. And this is potentially huge because it will hopefully change the way that teachers interact and collaborate with each other. I mentioned in my last slides that through our work, we, are, we have now identified principles of practice um, that will actually support schools and principals in dealing with um, issues on the ground and in terms of living out the, the five core values. And through this work and through hopefully future work that we will engage with with the sector, we're hoping that the, the core values will be evident within the policies of the school. Um, so in terms of the documents that guide how the school work, but also in terms of how students experience the school um, through relationships within the school and through all the different interactions that happen within the school. So that it's evident at both a kind of a theoretical, but also at a practical level. So that's the talk. I hope you found it interesting. Um, I'm not in a position to take direct questions at the moment, but I'm very happy to receive emails and to have follow up conversation with anyone, either in relation to the work, some of the specific papers or in terms of educational research, masters, PhDs more generally. So my email address is on the slide and thank you very much. Take care.